Hello again, you're welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Worth. I'm currently a fifth year medical student of the University of Abado. And in today's video, I'm going to be talking about how I studied in preclinical parts of medical school. So medical school can be said to be divided into three parts. We have the preliminary, preclinical and the clinical. So when I was about to start my preclinical was when I actually took it up on myself to actually learn how to study more effectively. Because I knew that, like I've always heard, that medical school is a lot. There's a lot of things to read. The volume is crazy. The workload is a lot. And you need to be very strategic about it. So during my break from 100 level going to 200 level, I took an active step to learn how to learn. And I can say my preclinical years was really good in terms of of my academic performance. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing how I studied as a preclinical student in medical school in hope that you're going to pick valuable lessons from here and you're going to be able to apply it to your own personal study life. I'm going to be sharing nine lessons I learned from actively making attempt to learn to study and paying attention to myself, seeing what works and what did not. Lesson number one is that effective studying is hard. And I got this idea from one of the best books I've ever read about studying. The book is Make It Stick an evidence-based book that talks about scientific approach to learning. Effective studying is effortful, it is active not passive. Effective studying involves you actually thinking about what you're reading. You're, you're not just scrolling through what you're reading like we do for newspaper or novel. Each line has to make some sense to you. Effective studying involves you asking, oh, this, what I just read, what does it mean? Effective studying involves you trying to find the connection between what you're reading and the prior knowledge you add. For example, many times when I'm studying, I'll read a line, then it will just make me think, hmm, I think that is what that particular thing I read previously was referring to. That is effective studying. Effective studying will also involve you often checking something out. For example, you come across something and it will not make so much sense to you. Effective studying is you actually taking an extra step to go check it out. Maybe by consulting the internet or looking at the textbook. Sometimes I'm reading a particular material and I just find myself stop that particular material and go read something else that will help me understand this current one. That is effective studying. You know, these effective study techniques, they are things that will probably make studying more difficult for you and they'll probably make you study for a longer period of time. But these are the things that actually work and there are a lot of scientific, scientific evidence to back it up. Just coming to this realization, make me do this ad scene and I know that I'm going to get the results from it and actually do. Lesson number two is that consistency is the key to sanity in medical school. I believe this is going to also apply to other schools you are. But medical school, based on the amount of work that is required, based on the volume and the speed at which things are coming at you, if you are not consistent, you just find yourself that, oh, exam is two weeks or three weeks away and I have this much things to do. I do not want to be in that situation. I do not like when exam is closed and I'm frustrated, worried, scared, anxious. I do not want to be in that position. I want to have exam coming up and still be able to have fun, still be able to spend some time to chill. That's how I always want myself to be. And I know the only way to get it is by consistency. Thinking about it now, I realized that there were times I would go for like one month or even two months straight and I would be studying every single day. And it became a habit, it became a very good habit. How did I achieve this level of consistency in preclinicals? So in one of my next few videos, I'm going to be talking about how you can achieve consistency. But in summary, let me just tell you the things I did that actually helped me to be consistent. One was that I had a reason to be consistent. One of the reasons was I do not like to be frustrated when exam was coming. I had academic goals. I knew what I wanted. I set goals that for my preclinical courses, I want to score above 17, all of them. And I think I meet many of those goals. So these are reasons that actually keep me on my toes and made me consistent. You should find a reason for you to be consistent. Another reason was the fear. I feared failure so much. I did not want to ever experience failure. And glory to God, I've never and I hope to never experience failure while in medical school. The second thing that helped me stay consistent was to remind myself constantly of my reasons. So all the reasons I've mentioned, I kept reminding myself. And the third thing was to build a routine, to build habit and make little changes that make studying easier for me. That makes it easy for me to actually get to study. Because if there is inertia, if there is like a resistance to studying, then you tend to not study. What I did was to remove all this barrier, reduce the resistance, reduce the inertia 
I'm going to talk about this more in, in one of my subsequent videos. So subscribe to the channel so as not to miss it. The next lesson I learned is that repetition is the key to long lasting memory. You don't expect to read something once and remember it forever without actually doing anything about that knowledge you just newly acquired. I would love it. Everybody would love it if that's possible that we'll just read something once and after reading it, forget about it. When exam is coming, you have this knowledge or when you need to use this knowledge in real life, it's just there. It doesn't work that way. I mean, there are a lot of research that has shown why this is the case. Our brain tries to keep relevant information to us and discard the one that it considers not relevant. So if you read something once, that way your brain doesn't know whether it is relevant or not. So if you don't do anything about that particular information you've acquired, you've newly acquired, your brain considers it, oh, we are not getting back to it and forgets it. So you need to constantly get back to the information you've just gotten. Now imagine the volume of work in medical school. There are always new material thrown at you. Imagine having to go back to one particular information. Where is the time? Where is the time to do that? So that's where this comes in. You do not actually have to reread. In fact, it is counterintuitive to reread a material all, all over again. In the book Make It Stick, they emphasize this, that rereading is a non-effective way of studying. But that does not mean I do not reread. I actually reread when I need to. But there are other ways to repeat a knowledge or to repeat one thing you've read before besides just rereading. So what are the different approach I use? One of the approach is practicing of past questions. So I practice past questions that are relevant to what I've read. There are a lot of past questions in the university. You always find them from the seniors, from even some textbooks are in form of past questions. So this past questions actually help you use the knowledge. When you see a question, you've seen a question, you're going to use them to answer the question. You think about what you've read. That way you are repeating it. And oftentimes you realize that, oh, I do not know this. Then you go back to consult that material. That is one way of getting back to the information. Another way of getting back to what you've read or of repeating is by teaching. I like to teach or discuss that particular information or knowledge or material with my friend discussion is a is a key part in medical school and it is quite helpful so another way to do it is by active recall i do this a lot i do this sometimes i will just be walking back from school passing a very quiet path then i'll be thinking about what i've read i do this a lot especially when exam is coming and if i've not recalled the particular information from my head i do not believe i actually know that information well yet recall is an important part of repeating a particular information you want to remember. Another thing is connecting that knowledge I've acquired with relevant future knowledge. If I'm reading a new topic that is related to the old topic, I try to see the connection, I try to refresh my memory of that particular old topic. And if I realize I've forgotten a significant part of it, I could just easily scroll through. It is not going to take me the same amount of time it took when I was reading it in the first place. Repetition is key. You have to figure out different ways to make repetitions. I could actually talk way more on each of those points, but I think there should be dedicated videos to all of this. The next lesson is that individual style is important. In medical school, you are going to see the smartest set of people. You will be intimidated. Sometimes you feel like you are not good enough because there are people that have like extraordinary abilities. It is important to understand your own individual style and stick with it so you will not be intimidated. You know what works best for you. For example, this I noticed that if in class the lecturer talks about something, I may not be able to discuss that thing we've just learned immediately. Everything is in my head but it is not well organized yet, it is not consolidated. On the other end, I have classmates that after the class, they can discuss, they will say exactly what the lecturer had said, maybe missing out only a few points. And sometimes at the beginning, it will make me feel bad, oh god, do I know I'm not as good as these people. But that is not necessarily true. I then realized that all it takes for me is to actually go back and review the material myself. Like when I read the material myself plus the knowledge I've had in class. When I'm reading it, I will realize that well, I actually knew a lot than I believed I knew. Then the information just stays longer and I remember it for way longer. So I learned my style. I, I paid attention to what works for me and I stopped giving much attention to what was working for other people and it made me way less frustrated and happier generally. If my friends are discussing something now 
and i don't know it it doesn't mean i will not know it it just means i need to go sit down to read it myself to be able to come back and discuss it with them so instead of just feeling bad i just pay attention to what they're saying and learn from them as well so when i go back to read myself i have plenty information i have that's some sort of repetition too i got some knowledge from the class i got some from listening to them talk now another exposure is when i'm reading it myself next point is that understanding makes life way easier and i always make it a point to understand understanding do not just make it easier to apply that information it also keeps the information longer in your head because if you forget a particular information but you understand how you got to a particular point you'll be able to easily use your understanding to recall it so how do i ensure to understand the first time i'm reading the material to understand it usually will take more time so the first thing i do is to go to class and try to pay attention quite a number of times you will not even understand what the lecturer is saying but they kind of emphasize the important points and when i get to study i sit down for the first time pay attention and give time to that particular material i consult as many materials I, as i need to and i also know that sometimes it could just be the presentation style of the slide or the particular textbook i'm using that doesn't make me understand it doesn't mean anything is wrong with me so if i'm reading the material and it is not understandable i know okay i just need to go and look for this particular information in another way that it's present maybe go to internet or watch a video on the topic or look for another textbook but once i understand the information at the beginning it just makes it easier for me to repeat the information and for me to remember it for longer but i need to say that understanding something doesn't mean you're going to keep it forever if you understand something you can still forget it that is why i mentioned repetition earlier you need to repeat it to keep it Lesson number six is to attend classes or not, but I advise you attend classes. In my hundred level days, I believe that I could not really learn by listening in class, which is not true. When I had to learn by listening in class, I did. In preclinical, there is a lot of things you are going to come across and imagine going to class and because you already had the preconceived notion that okay, I cannot learn by listening, listening in class, then you will not pay enough attention. That was what I was doing in in my 100 level i will not pay enough attention and i will actually not learn in class but there was enough time in 100 level when i get back home i will read it and i'm going to learn everything but in preclinical time was even more limited so what i told myself was this if i'm attending a class i'm going to actually attend it i'm going to even if i do not understand i'm going to be looking at the lecturer like this i will just look at him or look at that and look at the person's lip yeah i get that many times i get distracted nonetheless but going with that mindset actually helps and many times when i'm rereading that material that's when i realized that oh i actually got more than i believe i got during the class so my advice for you if you're attending a class make sure you're actually attending it and if you know that this class is not going to be helpful just don't attend and spend that time actually reading or doing something that is good but i generally advise to attend classes because i do too and it, it helps the next lesson is i used multimodal approach to learning and multimodal approach i mean is that in preclinical we had practical sessions we had discussions we had stuff like that so after at least going to class i read myself when we go to practicals, I try to relate what I've read to that practical. And do you know the interesting thing is that some exams, I will see a question and the only thing I'll remember or the only answer to that question will be from the discussion we had during the practical session. So it is very important. Any means you have to learn, just use all the means. Even if it includes talking to your roommate about what you've learned, just use all the different approaches. It helps consolidate information longer. Lesson number eight is that group studying and brainstorming is important and tutorials too i had a group of friends we discuss stuff together in those cases they are usually very helpful and i try to not be passive when we are talking when we are in group discussion i try to also contribute i try to teach and also try to learn from people and the last thing which was one of the important things is that you should not sleep on past questions in school there is a lot of repetition of past questions and you know how painful it will be if a past question is repeated the whole class did the past question except you that's painful but not just that doing past question is actually a form of learning and i learned that that practicing question actually helps you learn in fact exam time is one of this might sound weird but i know that i learn way more during exam when i'm preparing for exam because my when i'm doing the past question i do not just read the past question and maybe memorize the answers provided actually use the past question to go read more i could just go online and check 
something i'll see oh this is what this thing is just by seeing the question from past question and if i had no previous exposure previous knowledge of that thing now doing the past question has helped me acquire that knowledge so these are ways i studied in preclinical part of medical school uh, maybe i'm going to make a video on how i studied in clinical school but it is mostly the same except that i've learned or i'm learning to study on the go and i'm as, i'm still learning to be better students because now as you proceed in medical school the time you have just keeps reducing so i i hope you found this video helpful please if you did kindly like the video subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed yet and share with someone share with people you think will find it helpful i'll see you in the next one bye bye